Hey guys, guess what? 2014 is in the history books. 2015 is here, so it's time for the Eat Lean and Train Mean Challenge. Whether you're getting ready for the CrossFit Games Open or you just want to lose some weight and look better and feel better, we got a little competition we've put together for you. Anybody can compete. It's, uh, there's a scale division, there's an RX division, uh, we have several different categories. We're going to have a weight loss category, we're going to have a most improved wad score category, uh, the best food journal category, and maybe one or two more. Uh, at the bottom of this video, you'll see a link where you can click and see all the deets on the rules of the game. We're going to start on January the 13th after the national championship game is over, so you have until next week to prepare yourself. We also have Dr. Nicole Ussery who has come and given us a talk on the paleo diet to give you all the facets and the ins and outs on how to eat right. And she's a great friend of mine and she's here to speak with us tonight. Is everyone here familiar with the term paleo? Is it new to anyone? You're not? Okay, so paleo comes from the word paleolithic, which means foods that are hunted and gathered. So when a um, long, long time ago, when cavemen and um, the, you know, the men used to go around, they would only eat things that they could physically go and gather themselves or hunt themselves. So that's where the term came from, is the Paleolithic men who were hunters and gatherers. So that kind of sets up for the whole paleo diet of the theme and um, sort of what you want to go for as far as food choices. Does that make sense? So um, the big question that I get is why paleo? Why should I eat paleo? Why, you know, why shouldn't I eat, you know, just eat lean and, um, and, you know, cut out fat? Well, paleo is actually one of the best, and I don't even want to call it a diet, but just one of the best ways you can eat for overall health. And when I say overall health, decreasing triglycerides, decreasing cholesterol, decreasing inflammation, which is a really big one. I see a lot of people that are just eat up with inflammation. Um, and it's mainly because of the foods that we're eating. Um, there are, um, I've seen people that have come in with arthritis all, all over their body. And just by making dietary changes, the arthritis is pretty much, I like to call it starved out of their body. Um, because it's all inflammatory. Same thing with females with endometriosis. Um, you know, there's a lot of different um, disorders and, and diseases out there that are really stemming from your diet and or the inflammation that's caused from the diet. So um, the inflammation is a big thing. Um, like I said, the blood panels, energy, um, metabolism. It's a great metabolic booster. Uh, the protein that you're eating with the paleo diet really helps boost your metabolism. Um, it also helps stabilize your hormones. So um, a lot of people that are having focus issues, a lot of people that are having where they just, they're up and down as far as mood, you can stabilize that with a high protein diet. Um, and um, also same thing with menstrual problems. Um, bad cramps, a lot of times if you can really um, change your diet, it'll help with with menstrual problems and cramps and moodiness during during that time as well. So um, that's kind of the why um, behind it. And um, now I, I want to talk a little bit about what foods are paleo, you know, because people say that's fine, but like, what do I eat? Um, and, and by the way, any any questions you have during any of this, just just raise your hand or ask because I like it to be open and I like for you to get what you need out of it. Um, so for the most part, paleo is um, lean protein at every meal. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, um, you always want to have protein. That's the most important part of your meal. Um, and then you want to fill um, your plate with vegetables um, for the other part if you're doing lunch or dinner. Even some people do veggies for breakfast, but you always want to have lean protein, fill in with vegetables, and then a little bit of fruit. Um, you want to do two-thirds vegetables, one-thirds fruit. Um, a lot of times, if you have people that don't really, you know, they don't care for vegetables, they want to do heavy on fruit, little vegetables, and you're going to get a lot of sugar, and you're also going to get what we were just talking about—a lot of inflammation. Because um, sugar, even or fruit, even though it is good for you um, in moderation, fruit does turn to sugar, and sugar does um, turn into inflammation and/or stored as fat, um, especially if you're not burning it. So you do want to be careful about fruit intake, and especially lunch and after. Um, I would try to limit your fruit. Um, 
you know, after lunch, I would do the majority of it breakfast, mid-morning, or lunch if, if you do want to eat a lot of fruit. Um, so for um, your meat, um, you want to stick with grilled or um, you, something that is um, baked in the oven. You don't want to do a whole lot of, or you don't want to do any fried, of course. Um, smoke, there's kind of debate, debates out there, you know, it's, um, is it paleo? Yes. Um, but just the smoked meats in general can be linked towards, you know, can be carcinogenic. So you just want to, you want to be careful about the amount of smoked meats you eat. Um, also, the quality of our food is really important. So I've seen um, people really, um, you know, get good changes with just eating the same thing, but switching over the quality. And when I say quality, um, instead of eating, you know, just, and not that anything's wrong with like Walmart or something like that, but instead of just going somewhere and buying meat that's like a, a store brand that is filled with, um, you know, hormones, um, you know, and, and other chemicals, nitrites um, and different things, I would try to get an organic or a clean meat because that way your body is going to digest more efficiently because it's not having to digest all the hormones, steroids, pesticides, etc. So with bacon, I would, I would try to do nitrite free um, and then I would try to do some sort of organic meat, whether it's green wise, whole foods, um, Costco now has the Coleman's organic. Um, which is really good. Um, white oats pasture has some good beef. This grass fed. I would I would try to go towards grass fed with your beef. Um, so those are those are all good options. Um, same thing with your vegetables and fruits. I would try to go organic as much as you can, because it is going to um, take out the chemicals and the pesticides. You can pick and choose if you want. If you're if you're trying to um, cut down on cost which I understand I would pick and choose. So your berries, your grapes, your apples, anything you're eating the peel, I would definitely do organic. Um, if you're not eating the peel or it has a really thick peel, you could probably you know, get, get something that's not organic and be okay, like a cantaloupe, watermelon, something with a thicker rind, um, bananas. Um, but for the most part, I would, I would try to go organic if you can, just, just to get a cleaner food and, and better for your digestive system. Um, so a big question I get on vegetables is green beans um, because green beans, you know, for the most part, yes, they're healthy, but they are not paleo. They are a legume. So um, when you, um, if you are trying to eat strict paleo, beans and um, beans and peanuts, because a lot of people ask me about peanuts too, are not paleo. Um, so you want to stay away from those if you are trying to be rigid with, with the paleo. Um, diet. Also, um, rice is not considered paleo either. So a lot of people will, some people say, well, you know, I'm not doing pasta or I'm not doing, but I'm doing rice. Well, if you're eating strict paleo, it's really not considered, considered strict paleo. So I just want to kind of be upfront with that. Um, so as far as how you're preparing your foods, I would um, choose a, um, a good fat meaning you want to stay away from like vegetable oils, canola oils. Um, you want to go with something like a coconut oil, grapeseed oil. Olive oil is great when it's not heated. So it's a great salad dressing. Um, when you heat olive oil, it changes its properties. So you want to stay away from that as far as, you know, cooking in a, a pan or roasting with it. Use that for your salad dressings or dipping sauces. Um, as far as nuts, um, almonds, walnuts, even pecans, I would stay away from peanuts because they're legumes. Um, and, and the reason for legumes, why are legumes bad? Well, how they work is they have a protective shell on them or coating. Um, so when you eat those, they will, they will swell. They will swell in your digestive system. Um, that is their protection mechanism to keep insects and bugs from eating them. So that's their way of saying, don't eat me. You know, I want to stay where I am in the ground. But that also happens inside of your gut, which is, um, you know, why we recommend that you stay away from peanuts. Um, also with your nuts, try to do something unsalted um, and just something raw or, you know, plain. You don't want all the, the added stuff. Um, it's best if you, I know Costco has a big bag of plain almonds. You can also go to Fresh Market, Whole Foods, any of those places and go in the little dipper thing and dip you some out. Um, but I would also um, stay away from the ones like the green tin. I forget what they're called. I don't know if one of y'all may eat them, but I've seen a lot of people walk around with the green tin of almonds. Um, yeah, but they, when I looked at them, they have NutraSweet in them. 
nutra sweet in them and then another one i looked at had like high fructose corn syrup added to them so not your best option try to really do look at look at your ingredients that's so important um, because there's a lot of hidden ingredients in packages applesauce the majority of applesauce unless you're getting one of the natural the first ingredients high fructose corn syrup so really pay attention to your labels and look for things like high fructose corn syrup you don't want to do that um, you want to say for artificial sweeteners which you're going to say aspartame um, splenda um, also anything with um, now sucralose sucralose is the big one that they're trying to hide in there um, but don't let it fool you because that's chlorine so is splenda and aspartame is formaldehyde. They break down a formaldehyde, yeah. So you definitely, you wanna stay away from your, your um, NutraSweet. If you need a sweetener, you wanna do coconut sugar, honey. Um, you can do sugar in the raw, but I would really try to limit sugar if you can. Um, I used to kind of throw out agave nectar, um, but studies are really showing that your body processes it very similar, if not the same as high fructose corn syrup. So I, I really don't, use agave anymore I, a honey is going to be your, a local honey is going to be your better choice um, as far as drinks um, water 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 so um, the the best thing you can do as far as a guide is take your body weight divide it in half and drink that many ounces of water a day so just make it easy if somebody weighed 100 pounds 50 ounces of water if somebody weighed 200 pounds 100 ounces of water um, fresh lemon fresh lime great um, I went and dumped the crystal light in there because you're going to get all the junk. Um, there is a crystal light fit that's made with stevia that's a little bit better, but you're going to do better just drinking plain water or cutting up a fresh lemon or lime and putting it in there. Any questions so far? I got a question. What, what about someone that's like really overweight? Because I've been telling, I've been doing the half your body weight in ounces of water a day. Three hundred and eighty pounds, still half your body weight in ounces of water. <sighs> That's the standard, you know, they could definitely cut down, but if they're working really hard, like if they're in here sweating a lot, and especially in the summer months and they're outside or even somebody who has like a construction job or an outdoor job, like your body really needs that amount of water because, and just a little spin into spinal stuff real quick because that's also what I do, but your discs are primarily water. Um, your muscles are primarily water. Um, so if you're not getting enough water, you know, you're setting up yourself down the road, you know, your discs are going to degenerate more. Your muscles are not going to have as good of integrity. Um, you're also not going to flesh out toxins as well. Um, so water is a very important part of just overall health, really. So, um, yeah, I mean, you, you could probably cut it down some, but I still believe, you know, you need, you need water. And if you're bigger, you're going to need more water. So, um, Yes, so um, some helpful places that you can go, um, is some sites. So honeyville.com is a great place to go for things like almond flour. Um, great, great thing to bake with. Great for coating if you want to do homemade chicken fingers. Um, chicken fingers with coconut flour and coconut oil. I mean, um, almond flour and coconut oil is really good. Um, so... Almond flour is great just to keep on hand. Coconut flour, it's a little more dense. So almond flour, you can almost do a one-to-one -one ratio of like white flour. Coconut flour, you cannot. You really have to look and follow the recipes and because it's gonna call for more liquid. Um, and then also you can get coconut sugar from there, which is really yummy. Um, I don't know, have any of y'all tried coconut sugar? It almost has like a hint of cinnamon taste to it. It's so good, it's really good. Um, but you can order that there. You can also order, um, um, like 80 percent um of like the cacao or cocoa there you can it's just a really great site um that's good quality and also good prices um another place that you can go is alana's pantry really good site for baking um she has great recipes also she, her almond flour cookbook is one of my favorites um practical paleo is a great paleo cookbook um diane Ooh, Diane, something with an S. In fact, I may have written it down because I wrote it down just to make sure. I, um, yeah, so Diane um, Sanfilippo, she, she wrote Practical Paleo and um, just a great cookbook. And it also goes into your GI system, 
what um, inflammatory foods do to your body, um, and it's, it's great. So it's a little more than even just a cookbook. It gives you some good background information as well. Um, paleo Mama's good, Paleo OMG. So the O in Paleo is the O in OMG. Um, great site. And pretty much now you can, it, it, Paleo is, is, you know, well known enough and, and it's kind of gone mainstream, I guess you can say, to where anything that you want to cook, you can Google it and it'll come up. The other day I want to do a carrot souffle because I had a bunch of carrots I need to cook and I did paleo carrot souffle and there it pops up. So you really can Google whatever you're wanting to make and make it paleo. Um, so the next thing that I want to touch on um, is that you don't want you don't want to be hungry and you shouldn't be hungry. Um, this is not a thing where you starve yourself. It's not a thing where, you know, you're going to be looking at the clock and saying, oh my gosh, I'm just starving. You should actually be full because you're going to be eating lots of protein, lots of vegetables, um, some fruits, nuts and seeds as snacks. Um, and you should be full and you're drinking a lot of water, which also helps with the fullness. So you should not be hungry eating paleo. Um, you should have more energy. Um, you should, your workouts, you know, will become more efficient. You may hit, you know, kind of peaks and valleys and that you may find some dips when you're first starting and your body's adjusting. Um, but once you get through that, you will be more efficient. Your body will, and your metabolism will, you know, will, will start up and you'll start to lose weight. And, um, it, and it helps with focus too. I feel like once you get the sugar out, once you get the dairy out, um, you get some inflammation out of your body, your focus and, and your thought process are so much clearer. Um, in your skin too, your skin's pretty because it, it glows and, and you're getting all the toxins out. Um, any questions? What other questions do y'all have for me? I got a question. Okay. Um, at Costco, yes. the vegetables at Costco, uh -huh. the big pepper packs and stuff, yeah. that's, that's what I did that. Yeah, so Costco, and I actually posted a link on my Facebook page at work, which was great. Um, the, the lady posted a thing, of it was like, um, the top, like, I don't know, it was like a whole list of things you can get at Costco that are healthy for you now. And I think I posted something like, yeah, you can go to Costco now instead of just putting toilet paper and paper towels in your bin. You can actually fill up a whole buggy full of, like, good food. So they have coconut oil, and it's the um, cold-pressed organic, which is what you want. They have, um, they also have uh, sugar in the raw, if, if that's something that you want to use. But they also have organic whole chickens, organic beef. Um, organic chicken breast. They have, um, like Kelly was saying, they have some of the organic mini sweet peppers, which are a great snack as well. They're high in vitamin C, like a lot of antioxidants in them. Um, they're really good. They also have organic carrots. They have organic green beans, organic broccoli. Um, and the, some of those are frozen, which is fine. Um, so as far as your type of food, you want to do fresh first, frozen second, and cans kind of on the bottom, really I wouldn't do canned. Um, you're gonna lose a lot of your nutrients. There's also usually a lot of sodium added. So I would stick with fresh, then frozen, and then canned if, if you have to. Um, but they do have lots of even um, Cascadian Farms, they have the organic berry mix that you can use for smoothies. Um, if you want, they have, um, I'm trying to think of the other things. Yes, organic eggs, they have organic butter. Um, and the carry gold, yes, is the good, the good butter that's, um, the, yeah, they're from the grass fed cows. Mm -hmm. They have almond milk there. They have, um, so yeah, so you can actually go to Costco now and, and, and fill up your buggy full of food that is good and it's good quality. Um, if you make smoothies, I would just, you can add things like almond butter. Almond butter is great. I would not do peanut butter going back to the legume. Um, Justin's almond butter is my favorite. Um, I've tried a lot. Everybody's different, but Justin's almond butter is just amazing. I love it. And it comes in the individual packets as well. So it's great if you're at work or if you're in the car, if you travel a lot, because you can just pop open a packet and either put it on a banana, put it on an apple, or just sometimes if I'm on the way to workout and I'm hungry and I haven't had enough to eat, I'll just squeeze a packet in my mouth. So those are great too for even lunches um, or like if you're going to a sporting activity practice and you don't have time to grab something, those are good snacks and a good way to get protein in. Um, no, I, I haven't seen those at Costco, but at Western? Yeah, so they have them, Western, they have them at, um, Publix has the, the big jar, but it does not have the individual packets, or they didn't last time I looked, but um, Target has them, Fresh Market, and Whole Foods. Those are the places that I've seen them, yeah. 
And um, they're like 99 cents or to a dollar or five, depending on where you go for the individual packets. And then the big jars, usually around 11 to $12 of the big jar of it. Um, it's yummy. So um, those are good protein sources also. And you never want to eat a carb without a protein. So meaning that I wouldn't do a banana for a snack. I would do a banana with almond butter or a banana with some almonds or walnuts or some turkey. Um, you really want to always stabilize a carb with a protein. Um, also, um, with your, um, oh, hold on, where was I going with the, the carb and the protein? I lost my train of thought. I was trying to remember as I was saying that to, to touch on something else, but I can't, I can't remember where I was going with that. Oh, but yeah. mix a carb, because what happens with straight carbs is it's going to turn into sugar. It's going to spike your insulin and then your body, your body's going to bottom out. So the protein helps stabilize that. It helps with your insulin, and um, it helps from the, the sugar, you know, the fruit, hey, turning straight into sugar. Yes. What other questions do y'all have? Any other questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest heavy protein in the mornings. A mid-morning snack with heavy protein. Um, if you like shakes, I like the isogenic shakes or the standard process. They're my two favorite because they're gluten-free, soy-free. Um, they also have um, no artificial sweeteners in them. But isogenics has a good one called isol. Well, there's isoline. So if you're trying to cut back but you want a meal replacement shake, they're great. But they also have the isopro, which is for people who are wanting to gain weight. Um, who are wanting to, you know, to put it going the opposite way. So those are great. Um, what, the shakes? Or is that what you're asking? Yes. So they come in canisters where you can dump them out and make them, or they come in individual packets if you want to take them with you or travel. Um, but, yes, they basically you add, you can just add water if you want, or I like them a little slushier, so I add a cup of ice, a cup of water, and do them in the blender. But you can take them with you and put them in a shaker and drink them with just water. But they come in vanilla, chocolate, and there's a berry now also. Mm -hmm. They're good. Um, and then you can build your own. I mean, you can build your own with fruit, almond butter, almond milk, coconut milk. Um, you know, build your own smoothies. I'd throw a handful of spinach in there just for added. Um, but, yeah, but if you want one already made or you need some, to, if you travel or you want to take it with you, I think the isogenics are the best because you can just mix them up and they're good. Uh huh. Uh huh. I do. I do standard process um, because it's just an organic. Um, it is an organic food based line that I like that's clean. And they have a way that is un you want undenatured, just organic way, you know, protein. And they have one that's plain, but Isogenics also has one that's really good. There's also Formulex has a good one that's more of a CrossFit brand. They have a good one. What you want to look for in a way, which, um, you know, you, you say, so, okay, I know a, a lot of you are probably getting confused saying, okay, we're saying dairy-free, but then you're talking about whey. So how is that? Okay, so if you do an undenatured whey um, that has the casein removed from it, you usually don't get the same side effects as a true with the dairy with everything intact. So someone who's lactose intolerant can take an undenatured whey and be fine. Same thing with the majority of people can drink, and I was talking to a guy in here earlier, he was asking me some questions, a raw whole milk and digest it fine. It's the pasteurized you know, stuff we have now that they've just, they've over-processed it is the reason why we are having trouble processing it. So if you take an undenatured organic whey, your body usually does really well with it. It is very rare that I find someone who cannot tolerate or has a sensitivity to undenatured whey. So with that being said, um, Standard Process has a great one that's plain, and Isogenics has one that is vanilla flavored that's good. And I would do that within 30 minutes of your workout, post-workout. Um, I would do some sort of, of recovery because it's going to help with soreness. It's also going to help with um, your lean mass and recovery. Um, I also would recommend fish oils. Um, it's one of the best things you can do as far as recovery, your joints, your heart, your skin. It's a natural anti-inflammatory. Um, one of the best things you can do. So I would really recommend for post doing some sort of high protein 
Um, I do my, I mix my way with a little bit of almond milk. My husband does it with a little bit of, um, he does some like fresh squeezed orange juice and mixes it with that. Um, you can mix it with whatever you want, but, or if you do the isogenics, you mix it with water because it's vanilla. Um, but I would recommend that, the fish oils. Um, and then other than that, um, there's really, you know, if you want to do something pre-workout, I would stay on the side of lean protein. I would do protein, maybe a good fat, when I say good fat, like some nuts um, or something, but you, you don't want to stay, you know, you don't want to do anything high sugar. Um, I would stay more on the protein, good fat for pre-workout, post-workout, do the whey and the fish oils. Yes? Where is the best place to get fish oil? Fish oil. So... Yeah, the kind of, it really is. I get mine from her. I ordered it from British Columbia. It's called NA Choice. Um, it's very clean. It's third-party tested. Um, so in a fish oil, let's talk about fish oils real quick. Fish oils can be overwhelming because, like Mark said, I mean, you can go to Kirkland's and get 1000 for nine ninety nine or Costco's, Kirkland brand. Um, you can go to Walmart and get about the same thing. Well, you're probably going to burp them up. They're probably going to have mercury in them and they may or may not have the correct ratio of EPA to DHA, which are your sources of omegas. So the most important thing with a fish oil when you're looking at a label is you want to make sure, one, it's mercury free. Two, if it's third party tested, that's even better because you can always say your products are great, but if someone else says they're great, they're probably great. Um, you want to make sure the ratio of EP, EPA to DHA is as close to a one to one ratio, no greater than a one to three ratio. Okay, those are, the, those are the most important things when you're looking at a fish oil. Um, liquid, you can take, you know, roughly depending, they're all a little different, but usually they're around anywhere from two to three teaspoons a day of a liquid for maintenance. Um, capsules, you're going to have to take anywhere from four to, I would say, eight, depending on how much, you know, what the makeup of, what type of fish oil it is. They're all a little different as far as how much comes in each capsule. Um, so I would... Um, you know, I love, like I said, I love the one that I have. It's very neutral. It's very clean. Um, but you can also get good ones at Whole Foods. You can get good ones at Organic Harvest. Um, you know, and, um, you know, I don't, there's one, it's like the Norwegian, I think it was. I used to carry it before N8 Choice came out with this one. Um, it's in like a green bottle. It's got like Swiss mountains on it. it it's, yeah, it's decent. I've taken it before. Um, but other than that, you know, I don't really know. A t I can't tell you specific brands. I'll just have to sit down and look at the. Um, there's one that's actually a CrossFit brand that's called, I think it's like Pure, and it's like in a silver and green uh, label. Um, it's clean. I've looked at it before. Um, it's pretty expensive. It's even more expensive than the one I have, which mine is not. Mine for a 500 milliliter bottle is $50, and that'll last you three months. Liquid. And the capsule is the same thing. I mean, I, I, I carry both half one liquid, half one capsule, because if you're doing smoothies, especially if you're putting any fresh pineapple or anything citrus in there, you dump it in there, you don't taste it. Yeah. Okay. You can mix it with tequila. Yeah, it is. Mix it with some agave tequila. There you go. It's going to burn a little bit going down, but hey. I don't. I don't. If, you're, if you are burping up a clean, good, great of fish oil, your body is not digesting well. Um, meaning, if you're a person who burps up garlic all the time, you're a person that has reflux, you're a person that's going to burp up a fish oil, even if it's a very good, great of fish oil, I'm not saying you're 9.99, you know, for a thousand capsules, but like a really good, you need to probably add a digestive enzyme. Um, paleo will help um, because it helps with digestion and it, it takes out a lot of those, um, your high fat, bad fat foods, fried foods, things that a lot of times trigger, um, high sodium foods that trigger reflux. But if you have reflux, you have um, problems with digestion, I, I would consider doing a digestive enzyme or a probiotic. Um, I, I do recommend a daily probiotic. It's great for digestion. It's great for immunity. Um, and I will tell you that your gut is, it's called your second brain. There's a lot of research on this and how the integrity of your gut 
is basically the health of your body. So if you have a poor gut, meaning if you have been on a lot of antibiotics, if you have taken a lot of over-the-counter Tylenol, Motrin, you know, things like that, you probably have leaky gut, which means your body is not absorbing well, your vitamins and your things that you want it to absorb, um, and then you probably got a lot of inflammation in there. So the best thing you can do is take a probiotic, a good probiotic, because that will help with digestion and your immune system. Um, and then um, try to stay off of your high inflammatory foods, gluten, dairy. Um, so I would stay off of, you know, all your breads, um, pastas. You can do brown rice pasta. It's not paleo, but if you're, if you're not going strict paleo, but you do want pasta, you can do brown rice pasta. Um, spaghetti squash would be a better option or zucchini noodles. Um, there's this really cool thing. I don't know if any of y'all have it. It's like a, I think it's called like a spiral spiral something but you put it in there and you can do sweet potatoes you can do zucchini noodles like I recommend all of you get one it's amazing like I love the thing you can put whatever you want in there and you can do you know you can do little spirals you can do noodles you can do all different kind of cuts with vegetables and um it just it kind of changes it up too and it makes it look different and if you've got kids that are trying to eat, you know it's, it's kind of fun for them because you're not just slicing zucchini and laying it out there flat you're doing cool little noodles or spirals with them so I ordered mine off of Amazon. What is it called? I, I'll, I'll send a link. I think it says called a, is it a spiral later or a yeah, spiral? Like There's a bunch of different ones. Um, you can probably get one at um, Williams-Sonoma probably carries one. Um, yeah, Bed Bath & Beyond would probably have one. Amazon's going to be the cheapest. I mean, I think the one I got was like, 29 bucks maybe. William Sonoma it'll probably be like 99 bucks. Yeah, they're but pretty, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um if you're worried about caffeine, if you're a coffee drinker, um yeah, so what I recommend if you if you do like coffee is do a press, coffee press. Um I do it every morning. And now I love it. I mean, it, I'll, I'll never go back to anything else. But, you know, basically just boil my water right when I get up. Do I, um, I, I try to go once a week and just get fresh grounds, grind them up, put them in there, pour it over, and, and press it. Um, that's going to be your best option for coffee. Um, if you can do, if, you want, if you're into decaf coffee, I would do organic decaf because it doesn't go through the chemical process that, of decaffeinating the coffee. Um, so it's, it is going to have more caffeine than your unorganic decaffeinated coffees, but it's not, it doesn't go through the chemical process, so it's going to be better for you. Starbucks decaf organic? Um, no, it's not. Whole Foods has a great um, organic decaf. Yeah, so when you press the coffee, um, one, when you're going through the machine, um, it just it when you press the coffee, especially the oils, it, it presses down the oils. You're also doing it without the you know you're pouring you're pouring the water over, going out, and it I, I can't I mean I don't even know all the scientific stuff behind it, but I do know that it has to do with the oils and the way the oils are expelled from the beans, the coffee beans, or the grinds once you do it, um, and it's it's more of a I guess you can think of it like an unprocessed. Do you know like kind of the the whole scientific behind it. it or, oh, it does taste better. Yes. 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 And I know it goes back to the oils and how the oils react to with the press, but I, I don't know. I, I need. I'll look into that and I can get back with you on that. What I do is I go like I went today. I go once a week. Um, they say that coffee stays fresh for anywhere from four to six days. So what I do is I go and I just I go to Fresh Market or Whole Foods and get the beans, and I pour them in the little machine and grind them, and then we use that for the week, and then I go back. So I don't grind my own just because I like to kind of try out different ones there, and so I just I go and do them there. But you can. I mean, you can get them and grind your own. If you grind them the day of, I mean... It's going to be even fresher, but yeah, my yeah, and and see, and what's neat is the only the bad thing about the coffee grinders because I have a little one, but to do a press, you really want them coarse, 
and to find one where you can change the settings, you have to get the big industrial ones, and they can get pretty expensive. That's why I like to just do it in the store, but you can get the little hand ones, but they're going to do it the same. You're pretty much going to get the same, the fine grind on those. Yep. What other questions do y'all have for me? Yeah, I love it. So what is it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's good. Yeah, so, okay, so you take your coffee and do it in the press, and then you pour it into a blender, and you mix, and I used to have the recipe memorized, but I think it's two tablespoons, is it two tablespoons of butter, and you want to use like a grass-fed good butter. Um, and then you mix some um, coconut milk, like out of a can, um, with it, and mix it all together. And it is so good. It is really good because it's almost like a, like have you ever eaten one of those kind bars that's like sweet and salty? Like the, the dark chocolate and almond kind bars? Yeah, it has that taste. Like it's kind of sweet but kind of salty. You know, it's, it's good. Yeah, I mean, so, uh huh. Yeah, just Google bulletproof coffee and it'll come up. Yeah, but it is, know, it's right. good. With butter and, and it's coconut milk. Imagine that's got a ton of cholesterol and, and coffee. coffee. No, you just no. Like you pour you pour your coffee in there hot and blend it and um, drink it. It's good. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So those almond butter packets would be great because they're the individual ones. They're easy. Um, like I said, like a, um, a little baggie full of like mixed nuts would be good. You could do pecans, walnuts, almonds. Um, kind bars are good. They don't have a ton of protein in them, but they are good ingredients. They're gluten-free, soy-free. They're kind bars, and they're good. Like, do y'all like chocolate and almonds? No, you don't like what? You don't like almonds. Okay. If you do the dark chocolate... Okay, they make peanut butter ones. They make peanut butter ones, yeah. I don't know that it's going to be a Reese's Cup. And those, um, I'll tell you what, that Justin's company that, that has the almond butter that I love makes Reese's Cups, and they are so good. They're really good, but that's not paleo. So, <laughs> but they are good. Um, but, yeah, so um, kind bars would be good. Um, there's also, um, if they could do, even one of those shakes would be good. Um, they could split like a lean one, like an ice lean one, because they could just put them, mix them with water and mix them, and they could even split one. Would be good for them to do before. Um, they they want it. Do they? So um, I, you could even do the pro with them. How old are y'all? Okay, yeah. So you could even do the pro, the pro shape, the um, ice, the Isogenics Pro, um, and like half one b between y'all would be good. Um, you can order it. Kelly can order it for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of some other things that would be good. Do you like avocados? No? Um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and it may be, too, if you do smoothies and put avocados in there. Avocados are great. They're good fats. They'll keep you fuller. Um, for someone that you were asking earlier who's trying to, like, keep weight on them, doesn't want to lose weight. Um, avocados are great to sustain and also keep you full. And um, so, But you can put them in smoothies and it makes them real smooth, but you can't taste them. So that would be good if you ever do a smoothie added in there. That would be good. Mm -hmm. So with a smoothie, do avocados and even almond butter, and that'll help put some weight on them if that's what your goal is. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. Yeah, and they make a they make a good peanut butter one. They make a really good peanut butter one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which ones? Oh, that's Derek's favorite, and th they have those right now at Publix. Three boxes for ten dollars. Yes, the apple ones. Yeah. So Derek, I had to go load up on that. My husband loves those. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I started doing that. Okay. And my cholesterol is really high, and I didn't realize how much cholesterol was in that because it's on a list of no-nos. It is. So, okay. Um, 
so there is a big battle in all of health with traditional and kind of more of holistic, I would say more of your natural side. There's just an ongoing battle. I see it in my job every single day. Um, that's one of them. Um, if you go to a cardiologist for the most part, there's some out there that will have a different school of thought, but the majority of the time they're going to tell you don't eat eggs, don't eat coconut oil, don't eat any saturated fats. Um, however, if you really dig into some research and you look at what saturated fats do for you, um, it's amazing, and especially for women. A lot of women who are going through, um, through postpartum depression, um, hormone adrenals, if you add saturated fats into their diet, drastically changes things. Um, also, cholesterol. As you age, and specifically men, your testosterone decreases and your cholesterol increases. And this is a protection mechanism that your body does naturally. I mean, it's how God made you to function to protect yourself. So a lot of times, you know, in my personal opinion, cholesterol is deemed high or it is a, dr a prescription drug is given to lower when really it's healthy for you to have. Now, I'm not talking about cholesterol levels that are, you know, out the roof, you know, 500 where you're, you know, you're walking. But on that high side is actually healthy as you age. And it's those saturated fats really go a long way in preserving your body and helping to stabilize everything and helping with your body function um, and actually protect itself. So, um, you know, and, and with eggs, they, I truly believe that the amount you can fit in your hand to eat that many at a serving size and that that's healthy for you. So for me, it may be two, for you, it may be three. Um, but, you know, two to three eggs daily, if you're eating, especially if you're eating a good, a good grade of egg, an organic egg, um, free range, um, it is good because it's one of the, it's one of the best complete proteins you can get. You know, it's because you've got your good fat, you got your, and then you got your protein. Yeah. So. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Any other questions?